What's up guys, Escoda52 and welcome back to a different video, a different video, well it is a different video because I have broken down on the way to work, I was going to film something there, edit something, have a wicked video ready for you, but turns out that my car uh, is basically a pile of poo poo. So if you could please like, subscribe, tell a friend to subscribe as well and help a brother out by just giving him some subscribers today because I need that love man, I need it. But anyway. This video is going to be a little bit different and that's cool and that's fine. It's windy, I'm using the tripod in the back of the car, hanging out the passenger door, but let's get into it. Okay, so I was going to do this whole like really cool scene where I've got a table set up and I've got a suit on and I'm going to be like banging papers and reading that news bulletin, like all the cool stuff that's happened this week to give you like a weekly roundup in terms of card playing sort of shizness this week but uh that ain't gonna happen because like i said in the middle of nowhere so we're just gonna do a rundown of the things that have happened this week so i was gonna do this whole voice and everything but i just don't even feel like i can do it but let's get into the video so let's start off with the bococo company so they've had a pretty devastating week for them some of you who have backed the lunar moon uh, campaign may have seen this email that came out it is stating that they had basically had to take down all of the works from everywhere online um, because they had been involved in a copyright lawsuit. So what happened is this account uh, posted this picture on Instagram some time ago. Um, I'm going to butcher the name, but it's like career or something like that. Um, and they posted this symbol, this sort of artwork that they had created on their Instagram page. Now the designer for Boko Poco Playing Card Company had taken that and literally copy and pasted it onto the Lunar Moon decks um, and Helios Star and the Esther Star. So they all literally had the same pattern of design and basically it robbed this woman of her work and made money off of it. What happened as a result of that was Kevin Yu got absolutely slated as if he was the person who had done something wrong. In fact, actually Kevin Yu had not done anything and it had been further released in a statement by Boko Poco Playing Card Company that um, they had a sort of a legally binding contract in which they took all responsibility for the design work, it was just the Fanning Tuck case that was Kevin's idea. Also, as well as that, Technology, which is um, a new friend of mine on Instagram, but he's a cool dude, um, and if you haven't checked him out before, make sure that you do link in the description below. He um, knows his stuff about card, hence why it's called Technology, and he posted a series, a carousel picture of um, basically a load of other plagiaristic works that had happened in the Boko Poco Playing Card Company. So we have got the Lost Deer, which had literally, and I mean literally, literally, not even figuratively, but they had just directly taken an image for the deer straight off of Pinterest and just copied and pasted it onto their deck and just changed the colour of it. Come on, guys. As well as that, you had the Oriental and the Mountain Playing Cards, which had literally, and again, literally, figuratively, directly taken the artwork of the back of a book and put it onto the playing cards. In fact, even the scripture that was used in it was copyright because they had just directly copied the font and the style and everything. And the placement just looks the same as you can see right here. So, what, well, I mean, what, like literally, what were they thinking? So, Bocopo released this statement and, uh, I'm not going to read it through because I, A, I don't have it in front of me, and B, um, I, like I said, I'm in the middle of the number. But essentially what it boils down to, and it will be scrolling across the screen now so you can read it at your own leisure, is that it, they trusted their designer to make the works. Their designer was the one who did all of the decks that I previously just mentioned. And he had just thought, yeah, you know what, it's okay, I'm just going to copy and paste other people's works and put it out there and be, you know, and it'll be fine. I'll make money off of it. Essentially, they have restructured their design team, got rid of that designer, and as a result, had a massive hit to their reputation. In fact, Bocopo, I don't think anyone can trust them anymore. And, and going off that as well, those who have backed Kickstarter campaigns, like myself, who are waiting for the Meowstar V2 vending machine and sweatshirt, they were due in May, and they haven't turned up so clearly this lawsuit has been the reason why they haven't been produced they're not fulfilling the decks fully are they going to be fulfilled are the people going to be refunded i mean i'd like to think so considering that we've paid and it's been backed um but yeah let me know your thoughts on the bocopa playing card company in the comment section down below so the second biggest news story this week and i mean this is a bloody doozy part of Mundi playing cards have bought out the rights of the uspcc from um the group that owns them and now, hopefully when that all goes through, they will be the sole proprietors of the USBCC playing cards and start printing 
um, the bicycles, the bees, and everything like that. Now, th now this is, has this has this has this has divided a lot of people, and the divide I've seen is basically down the Atlantic. So everyone in Europe has the good card and playing cards. So we have like the code pads, and they're printed with the B9 true linen quality, and it's a good print. All the people in America are a little bit suspect purely because. The cards that they have from the Carton Mini factory there are not good versions of the Carton Mini cards that we have in Europe. So I see this big divide with like, I hope they don't ruin the quality. USPCC um, are quite happy to have sold it. Carton Mini bought it and they released a statement, which is just here, and they basically said that they're going to be keeping the quality, saying they're just going to own the name and they're going to be bringing together the playing card community as a whole, which is wicked and that's epic and I think it's a great move because if USPCC, even though they had $112 million profit, last year if it's not enough to sustain the company um, and it goes down we're going to lose out on a lot of print quality and a lot of printing carter mundi want to expand their business well you know if they're going to look after the playing card community and do a load of cool stuff then that is amazing by my standard and then that leads into the third amazing piece of news that's happened this week that is also whoops note to self do not flex because this will pop open, sorry for the chest. One of the amazing things that's happened as well this week is that the uh, expert playing card company have bought the rights, or now own the rights, to reprint the Jerry Nuggets casino playing cards, and that Kickstarter will be going up on the 1st of July. So, a little funny bit that leads segue into this is, Cart Money bought USPCC, USPCC own legend, Expert playing card company were going to use Legend to print the Jerry's Nuggets, which in turn means that Cardamunti are producing Jerry's Nuggets, which is like the most ridiculous thing ever. So you may remember, well, if you are into playing cards or if you're not, Jerry's Nuggets, it was a casino in Las Vegas and they had like a, you know, their own cards printed. These cards are something special about them though. They were air cushioned on only one side and then the other side it was sort of like a just sort of like a weave or something like that. These cards were produced and they were about like 50 cent at the time. And um, a bunch of people picked up loads of them. Now they got super hyped because they were used in a lot of like tutorials and Dan and Dave used them in, in, in I think in some of their trilogy works. And a lot of big name people that started out the playing card company as it is today used those cards too. And because they're featured everywhere, people just wanted to buy them. Now the current value of an original OG blue seal, Jerry's deck is $500. Literally what I'm paying to fix my car today could get me one deck of Jerry's, Jerry's Nuggets. If I own that deck, I could fix my car, but I don't. So all I'm relying on to fix my car is your likes, your loves, your comments, your subscribers. Please tell just all of your friends because I need to get this car fixed so I can work. Jerry's Nuggets are getting reprinted. They're gonna be on Kickstarter. They sent out a bunch of packages to influencers in the magic community. So um, quite a few people managed to get some of them, which is wicked and I'm, I'm glad they did. And uh, a lot of people divided about this because they're thinking, well, you know, it's going to ruin the the sort of value of the original Jerry Nuggets. And I do not think they do because one, they're not branding themselves as the original Jerry's Nuggets. Two, it's amazing for people who don't have $500 to buy what is a replica of the Jerry's Nuggets and it not have the same quality. It's not going to have the same quality, let's be honest. No one can replicate the original print series quality. However, it will just be good for people to just get some of them. And then, you know, if they're a valuable, if they're a good price on Kickstarter, it could be a worker's deck for some people. That's going to be great. I just think it's going to be great. I think a lot of people think it's going to be divided, it's going to devalue it. I don't think it will be devalued. Because um, it's not like you're putting the, it's not the same thing. In fact, it may only increase the price of the other Jerry's because people go, well, if these, these feel pretty good, but I wonder what the real Jerry's felt like and probably end up paying more. So those are the three major pieces of news that are going on right now in the playing card community. As well as that, we've got a bunch of cool new releases coming out. Um, there's some new playing cards, some other things have been teased. So if you like this kind of feature, where it's like a weekly rundown of all the cool things that have happened in the playing card community, please let me know in the comment section below. Like, actually, just drop a comment down below. I'll be around for the first two hours after the video's dropped, and I'll reply to all your comments, take your feedback on board, and push this channel forward. Also, lest we not forget, I do have a giveaway still going on right now, and I'll be sending out um, I'm paying for the shipping on the uh, on the giveaway because it is a giveaway, not a competition. And because I'm giving away some playing cards, I will be giving them away at 250 subscribers. So if you need some cards, you'd like some cards, you'd like to be in it for a chance to win, subscribe to me 
and comment on this video that's coming up here. Just click on that, drop a comment down below and you'll get entered into the giveaway where you can win two decks of playing cards. Ooh, that's right. And then I'll do another video, uh, sort of giveaway at 250 for you to win some more playing cards and I'll pay for the shipping of that as well. So make sure you tell your friends to subscribe to me and you can be in for a chance to win some playing cards and maybe I can get this bloody car fixed and uh, not cry myself to sleep at night because I'm literally going to be eating beans on toast for the next three weeks. <laughs> Uh, no, but seriously guys, I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have, make sure that you like, you subscribe, you comment down below. And as always, as always, please, have a good day. Wicked. Uh, and uh, I can't really think of anything else that I'm going to say apart from the usual, guys. <gasps> Bye!